Hey everybody! In today's video I'm going to be making a dandelion and resin and I do realize that I'm like several years late to the party here and people have been doing this for a while and I actually even tried it a few years back and it didn't work and there's a couple of reasons that it didn't work. I actually even got one to technically work but I wasn't happy with it and uh, I'll break that down here in a little bit. So I recently found out why it didn't work for me is because I needed to spray the dandelion with hairspray. So now that I know that, I can successfully pull this off. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making some pieces. We're going to be going to the park and I'm going to get some dandelions and I'm also going to get some of the buds and bloom them at home because a big issue that I had when I tried it the first time was transporting it because like I said, I didn't know it needed to be hairsprayed. So I'm holding on to this little dandelion and all those little seeds are falling off and by the time I got it home to put into resin, it looked all haggard, all kinds of of them fell off in the resin. It was a big old thing. So that was one of the times I tried. Another time that I tried, I used a different breed of dandelion or a different species of dandelion than I think what is normally used. I prefer the ones, the like wispy little ones that you get at the park. This is more of like a wild growing, like these will grow out of the gravel in our yard kind of dandelion. And I made a piece with it before, like this a specific species, but I just wasn't happy happy with it. Like it didn't, I don't know, it looked like straw kind of, I, it's just, I, I wasn't happy with it. So I now know that I prefer the dandelions that pretty much grow at the grass or in the grass at the park. You know what I mean? So yeah, we're going to go to the park for that. So before we head to the park to get our dandelions, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the pieces I've already made now that I know what to do and how to do this. Some of them I left clear, some of them I put a black background. We're going to be making some of both. I like the black background because it makes them pop. That looks pretty cool. Um, this is one, it was a little too big. I tried putting it into a small mold. It looks a little bit jumbled, so in the future um, we're going to be using molds that are bigger size so it really has room to spread out. Here is one. A bigger one I put in here. That one looks okay. It might look cooler with the black background. I don't know. Now this one is my favorite. I made this one yesterday. We're going to make one of these today. We're going to make a few of these. We'll do the heart and just I have a few random molds here and there but this came out really cool. So we're going to make something similar to this and this was just a came out of a mold that I got at Hobby Lobby. They came in a set of three and it's pretty cool. This is a different shape than this one, so we're going to try a different shape in today's video, but let me get a black background so you can actually really see what is going on in there. Isn't that cool? Some of the molds we're going to be working with is I have this big half dome. I have one of these, like I said, I got it at Hobby Lobby. I have just this random little geometric kind of thing I ordered from China at some point. I feel like I've had that for years. And then I also have this mold that I got. It was at a grocery store. It was at like Smith's or Albertsons. You know how y'all go down the aisles and they'll have stuff like hanging on the sides. Um, like impulse buys pretty much. So that's this. I'll see if I could find something like this on line like Amazon or wherever. I mean, it should be pretty easy to find. It was just an ice mold. There's like a top part to it as well. All right, so with all that out of the way, we're going to head to the park. And what I'm going to bring with me is I'm going to bring a book and I'm going to bring the hairspray. The book is going to help with the transport. You'll see when we get there, but I'm going to pick a dandelion. I'm going to hairspray it and then I'm going to stick the stem in the book and close it and it's going to hold all of them so you can transport a lot at one time. This really helped a lot because then I could just put it in the passenger side of the car or whatever and they're fine until I drive home and then I can bring them home. And then I hang them upside down and let them dry a little bit. I'll show you all of that in a while. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to take my book, I'm going to take my hairspray and now we are going to go out into the world. Um, yeah, we're going to a park, we're picking some blooms, we're picking some buds and I will see you out there.
All right, so I have my blooms and I have my buds and now we're gonna go back home and put the buds into water so they can bloom. Okay, now I'm gonna take the buds that we got at the park and I'm going to put them in some water. This is just a little glass container that I filled with water and I put them on the windowsill so they can get some sun at some point during the day. And I'm just gonna let those hang out. And in about a day or two, they should be fully bloomed and ready to be sprayed with the hairspray and then put into the resin. And then over here, I have some that I've already done that with. So yeah, we're gonna leave these, we're gonna let them bloom, and then I will see you when these are good to go. So it's only been a couple of hours and one is already starting to bloom. It's been a few more hours and this one is totally done blooming. It bloomed so quickly, I'm so excited. So now I'm gonna take my hairspray. I'm gonna spray it down and then I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna hit it with a couple more coats. I don't know how much to, uh, to uh, hairspray it, honestly, so I'm just gonna play it by ear. So now I'm just gonna put this aside and uh, come back and do that again later. I actually really want to share a dandelion that I found today at the campus when I went to register for school. Look at this thing. It is huge. It is the hugest dandelion I've ever seen in my life. Look at it compared to my fist. It's bigger than my fist. This thing is massive and I love it so much. Um, we're not going to be using it in the video. I just really needed to share the fact that this thing exists. So yeah. Behold a giant dandelion, and now we can get back to what we were doing. Once my dandelions completely bloomed and I covered them in hairspray a couple of times, I just sprayed them a couple of times and that ended up being plenty. There were a few that I sprayed three or more times. It really wasn't necessary. A couple of good passes with the hairspray was enough. After I did that, I took them and I just kind of hung them upside down to dry out. This is just a jewelry thing that I will take photos of my jewelry on. It's made of metal, so I stuck the dandelions upside down to it with some magnets that I had on hand. I don't know if you need to hang them upside down to dry them. All I know is that is what I did. I showed the molds that I'm gonna be using earlier Earlier in the vid but I'll kind of cover them again we're gonna make some dome pieces this geometrical kind of faceted piece we're gonna do another one of these and then I'm gonna make a heart some of them I'm going to leave the background clear some of them I'm going to pigment black like you saw in those other pieces like this one right here it has a black background and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use activated charcoal that's generally how I make my resin black. You can get this stuff, I get it at a soap making website, but you can get like activated charcoal pills from health food stores or order them online. Um, it's, it's fairly easy to find. So yeah, I'm gonna be using that for some of them, not for all of them. Um, I'm gonna try the heart again that I showed you before. I wanna try it without the black background and see what that looks like. I think I might like it more, I have no idea. So now I'm going to get some resin all mixed up and I, I won't be showing that. If you would like to see that process, you can check out my video, Resin Basics for Beginners. I have a Resin Basics for Beginners too. All of my demos and reviews, I mix, I measure and mix product up. So yeah, I'm not doing that for this. So I'm also gonna run it through a vacuum chamber because I have a vacuum chamber and it's just a thing I can do. So I will see you in the next shot when I have my resin mixed up and degassed. So I will see you in a little bit. Okay, so I've switched to voiceover because I'm wearing a respirator. I mixed up a good amount of resin, so it's just a good call. The resin that I'm working with today is Amazing Clearcast Plus. I love this product for a few different reasons. I've done a demo and review on it. One of my favorite things about it is its yellow resistance is extraordinary. Here are two pieces I've had out in the sun since November to test the yellowing. One is the original product. The other one is the Amazing Clear Cast Plus. It hasn't yellowed at all. So I highly recommend giving this stuff a shot. For now, we're just gonna be working with these molds and then afterwards, I'm gonna be working with this bigger stone looking one because I'm going to take a slightly different approach with it. I've tried this two different ways. The first way was I filled the stone mold all the way up 
with resin and then I put the dandelion in it and then pushed it down with a toothpick once the product thickened up enough to hold the dandelion in place. This one right here, I tried pouring two different layers so I could keep the dandelion where I wanted, but you can see a very distinct line where I poured one layer and waited and poured another one. I've made a piece with this geometric looking thing and it also has that same line because I poured two different layers. It's not nearly as prominent in this piece, but it is still there. The reason that I tried that two layer approach is because sometimes the dandelions have air in them and they want to float. Um, so yeah, that's the reason I was trying that to just hold the dandelion in place and then pour that second layer. But what I've been doing instead is just taking a toothpick, like I'm gonna put the dandelions in, wait for the resin to thicken up a little bit more and then I'm gonna push it into place with a toothpick. And once the product is thickened more, it can hold it a lot better. So if you don't mind having the line in your piece, then by all means go that route if you would rather it not be there. Another way to get around it is to just kind of monitor it and push it back into the resin and you'll see me do that in a little bit. Now I'm going to take my dandelions and start to put them into my resin. So I'm going to take them and I'm just going to rest them on the surface for now and really let the resin start to work around those little dandelion seeds and get all up in it. I want to ensure that there are as few bubbles caught in the dandelion itself as possible because it'll help with it not floating to the surface as much. So I'm just going to put the little puff on the resin for now and I'm going to go and I'm going to do it with all of these different parts and then I'm going to pour more resin on to it. Now I'm going to take more resin and I'm going to just pour it right down the stem and really try and get it all up in those seeds because like I said, I don't want air bubbles in it and I just want the resin to really just grab onto all of it, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm trying to saturate the dandelion as much as I can by just pouring the resin directly into it. So now I'm going to take a toothpick and get everything situated in there. I'm gonna do this again when the resin thickens up more and it's just so I can get as many of those little puffies under the resin, you know what I mean, under the surface of the resin. I'm gonna be careful when I do this because you can disrupt the seeds on the little base and uh, you can, I, I don't wanna call it mess it up, it still looks okay, but it's just not as perfect as I would like it to be. And here's actually an example of what I'm talking about where you can pull the little puffies up off of it. It doesn't look bad, but it definitely looks like they have been dislodged from their little base thing. So now I'm gonna wait about half an hour for these to thicken up more, and then I'm gonna do exactly what you just saw me do right now. I'm just going to push those little puffies into the thickened resin. All right, now making the stone type piece is going to be a very different beast. So generally with resin, it's a heat reaction. So if you pour pieces that are too big, it can superheat and it can ruin your project. The ways that you really get around that are you can use casting resins that are meant for deeper pours and thicker molds and that type of stuff. And what those will do is they don't heat up as fast and as intensely. It's more of a slow and steady kind of deal. So there are products on the market, Alumalite makes one, uh, Super Sap makes a version of its hardener that's a slow hardener, Counterculture DIY makes a deep pour epoxy. So you can go that route, and I didn't want to go that route for one particular reason. Um, the dandelion, like I said earlier, like sometimes it'll flow and you have to kind of wait till the resin thickens up to get it to where you want to be. That was definitely the case with this. So if I'm using a very slow curing resin, it might be easy for me to miss the like precise window that I would need to position the dandelion to where I want it to be in the resin where I want it 
to stay in the resin. So that's why I'm not doing that. How I'm gonna get around pouring so much product into a mold this size, because it did, this one definitely heated up. And the way that I controlled it is with a cold water bath. And that's what this is gonna be. I'm gonna put ice in here, I'm gonna put cold water, and we're going to pour a lot of resin into our mold, monitor it until it's thick enough to put the dandelion exactly where I want and then I'm going to cool it because it's going to thicken up quickly when it gets hot like that. So I'm going to take it and then I'm going to put it in the ice water bath and it's going to regulate that temperature and I could take it out and kind of test it and go from there. But this is going to keep it from overheating. So I'm going to get some resin mixed up. I'm going to get my ice water bath situated with ice and the water. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try and do this again. I hope it goes okay. The, this is the first one I did and it looks great. The second one, like I pointed out before, like there's definitely some problems. I mean, it's, it's not terrible, but there's the visible line situation. I don't know, we're gonna see what happens and I really hope it goes okay. I have more resin mixed up now. So I brought these other pieces back that still need the black background. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my resin, I'm taking some activated charcoal, and I'm gonna take a stick and I'm just gonna incorporate it into the resin until I get my desired level of blackness. And then I'm just gonna take that and I'm going to pour it into these two molds Mixing the charcoal into the resin introduced a few bubbles, but they will degas on their own. This product is really, really good about that. So all of the bubbles that you see rising to the surface, they will just pop on their own. Under normal circumstances with other resins, I would take a lighter or a torch across the surface of the resin to pop those bubbles, but they'll go away. Um, I really love this product for so many reasons, and I do feel the need to say that I don't work for these people. I don't work for any resin companies. These are, like, the opinions I have are my own. Now I'm going to move on to the stone mold, and I'm going to do what I did with the other molds. I'm going to pour some resin into the mold. I'm going to take my dandelion and put it in there and let the resin really work its way around all its little seeds. And then I'm going to come in with more resin, and I'm going to pour some around the dandelion. I'm gonna pour some on top of it. I'm even gonna pour some down the stem to really try and get it all up in those seeds and ensure that we don't have any excess air bubbles around the dandelion like caught up in its little seeds. Okay, so I got a dandelion into the resin, into this mold, so on and so forth. Now I am monitoring the heat because like I said before, it's going to heat up very quickly. The dandelion itself is already starting to float. It was much lower in the mold when we first started. So I'm going to monitor the thickness of the resin and I'm going to wait until the right time to push that dandelion further into the mold. And I don't want to do it too many times because I don't want to knock the seeds off. This is actually my second time filming this part because I totally knocked the seeds off of the one before and then got all upset. So if yours doesn't come out right the first time, don't be too discouraged. It happens to the best of us. I'm going to let this heat up. I'm going to wait until it thickens to the point that I want it to be. It's been about 40 minutes now, and it's starting to get pretty warm to the touch. So it's gonna start gelling up really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead, push my dandelion down. With a toothpick. All right, so that should stay right there. If it comes up, I'll push it down again, but soon it's gonna start to get really hot and then I'm gonna start to use the ice bath. And then when it starts to get too hot, and it totally will, I'm gonna dip it into the cold water bath. And that's just gonna help 
with temperature regulation. You don't need to leave it in there the whole time. Once it cools off significantly, you can pull it back out of there. The trick is just gonna be catching it before it gets too hot and putting it in there and cooling it a little bit. Keep an eye on it. Yeah, and if, if you keep cooling it, it's gonna be okay. So with that said, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna wait for it to heat up until it's the thickness I want, and then I'm gonna just put it in here to cool it, let it out, put it in here to cool it, so on and so forth. All right, so it's the next day and the pieces are ready to come out of their molds. With this one and this one, there's a little bit of stem sticking out. So all I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna come in with some nail clippers. I'm just gonna cut that right off. All right, so I guess we'll start with this one. All right, so that's what that looks like with the black background. It looks pretty cool. I do think I might prefer it with the clear background though. Here is another one that I've made. Um, I don't know, I think they're both cool actually. I do think I might prefer the clear one though. All right, so we'll do the heart next. That looks cool. This one, I totally knocked off some of the seeds. Um, it doesn't look bad though. It's kind of uh, bumpy on the back where some of the dandelion stuff was sticking out, but all I'm gonna do with that is dome it, just take more resin and pour it into here, and then that will sort all of that out. Another way I can go about it is this one I had some of the dandelion stuff sticking out of and I just took a Dremel tool to it and smoothed it all out and then sealed it with more resin and then with that I'm just going to stick a magnet to it and make it a magnet. Alright, so now we'll do this one. That one looks pretty cool. Same concept as the other one. Okay, now we'll move on to this one. That one looks super cool. I've already made one and showed it to you, so I'm sure you kind of knew what to expect, but regardless, that is very cool looking. I'll make sure to leave the links for the molds that we used in the video so you can get them if you would like. All right, so the final one. These molds are kind of hard because there's no real graceful way to take it out, you just kind of have to stretch the heck out of it. So here we go. Ugh. Awesome, looks pretty good. I did knock a couple of the seeds off and they're kind of just floating around, but you know what? I kind of like it. Awesome. All in all, it held together pretty well. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Cool. All right. So I guess that is that. Awesome. Well, if you would like to give this a shot, I hope that this video helps you get to that point to be able to pull it off and don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't work the first few times i've messed up a bunch uh yeah cool so i guess that covers everything i wanted to cover i thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a great day